Um, and yeah, I remember <laughs> even physically it was, yeah. it was quite the journey. And I think because we had gone a little bit further along. Yeah. And so I remember going to, to church the next Sunday actually. Mm -hmm. And I was still kind of swollen just yes. from the surgery and whatever. And I remember someone saying, oh, congratulations. <laughs> And I remember just not having words. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the physical, the emotional are all yeah. wrapped up, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was a journey. Yeah. We, I think the hardest milestone to get past was the what would have been the birth date or mm. the due date of that baby. Yeah. Hi everybody, welcome to Being Kambua. I trust that you are doing amazing and thank you so much for joining me once again. Um, we've just been having such amazing conversations over the last couple of weeks, unpacking what the journey to motherhood looks like, all the dynamics that we don't anticipate, um, the hurdles that we face along the way, the conversations that are difficult but must be had because we come from a society of um, a culture of silence and we must break that silence in order to, to heal, in order to find solutions, in order to get the right support and that's what this particular space is for. I'm so, so excited to introduce this next guest to you because um, I met her because she is the wife of somebody that I worked very closely with and love dearly as a brother, but she is also a powerhouse. She's a designer. She is a mother. She's like a lot of things. Hi, Debs. Hi, <laughs> Kambua. <laughs> it's so good to have you here. It's nice to be here. I also, I need to tell people, okay, so <laughs> Debs is DJ Moses' wife. Yes. <laughs> I need to tell people that the first time I ever spoke to you on the phone, I think I had been given a heads up, but I wasn't ready. I was told, I'll say it in Kiswahili. Huyu mzungu wa Moz ana sound kama mkenya. That was the introduction. <laughs> so, and I think like you, you've had it so many times where people will call you and they're like, no, I want to talk to Debs. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, this <laughs> the is the other Debs. <laughs> Yeah. They're like, no, they're the Muzungu mm -hmm. Debs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it happens. So they show up at the office and they're like, hmm, you're not the one we spoke to on the phone. <laughs> it's like, mm, not fully Muzungu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Debs, mm -hmm. it's so nice to have mm -hmm. you here. Thank you for saying yes to me. Um, when I, when there's a time we worked closely, when you designed clothes, you were at mm -hmm. Seed of Hope. That's right. Yeah. Where are you now? So now in a similar line of work in yes. that it's still social justice focused, still in the NGO world, but yes. now an education NGO called Dignitas. Right. So we work with schools in particularly marginalized communities trying mm -hmm. to improve the quality of education. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a family that I absolutely love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will not say much about DJ Mo's. Everybody knows him is famous or whatever. <laughs> this is not about you today, Mo's. <laughs> For, once. Me, For once. For once. <laughs> um, but Debs, I just brought you on board because I think you're such um, a, a, a powerful voice and, and, and a representation of motherhood. We watched you mother so beautifully, but it's so easy to look at you and think her journey has been so easy. I mean, they just have these beautiful kids. I wish I was like them. Um, and maybe just because of my proximity to Moe's, I am privy to some of the challenges that you have encountered, and that's mm -hmm. what we are here to mm -hmm. unpack today. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let me first start by asking you, I, I, I like to know when you're, you know, growing up, did you, were you the girl who always imagined, I'll be a mom, I'll have so many babies, <laughs> or were you the girl who was like, uh, if it happens, it happens, I don't care. Which side of the divide do you fall? No, I definitely wanted to fall in love, get married, have babies. Yeah. But I guess at the same time, not not in the fully kind of traditional way. I wanted to work. I wanted to be a career woman at the same time. Yeah. My mom had worked and had kids. So I guess I had seen her do both of those things. Yes. Um, my expectation was I would have kids very young. Yeah. So by the time I was like 20, 25, I'd be married, I'd have kids, yeah. life would be good, mm -hmm. but it didn't quite go that smoothly, oh. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when did, when did the journey start? So it didn't start as early as you thought. No. So when, when did the journey, when did you guys get married? So we got married 15 years ago next month. La la. <laughs> Which is scary. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that was 
2008. Mm -hmm. I do my maths right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so 2008. Yeah. We met towards the end of 2005. Yes. Um. So I was 25, 26 when we met. Yeah. Um. And I was actually really glad of that. I yeah. think there are many things I would not have done, including Seed of Hope and all of the things that went along with that. Yes. And um, maybe even moving to Kenya. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I might not have done. Yes. Um. If I'd met somebody and fallen in love at the age of 20. So I was actually really grateful that I'd lived life a little bit first. Yes. Not that life stopped, yes. but <laughs> it took a different turn. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we met towards the end of 2005, got mm -hmm. married 2008. Where did you guys meet? We met at um, in Morocco. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing in Morocco? We had gone to pick moods. So I was part <laughs> of the... <laughs> Okay. I, I was part of the church plant team for yes. Mavuno Downtown. Yes. And Mavuno Downtown, when it was starting, started the kind of young adults ministry at uh, Village Market. Yeah. But we hired Moses, a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> the DJ became the husband. So, yeah. <laughs> I was in the car that went to pick him up. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, we ended up that night, in fact, we ended yeah. up stranded in the car park. It was before the days of Uber, taxis yes. were expensive. So yeah. we had to wait for the one car to go drop oh guys in town, come goodness. back, go drop, come back. Yes. So there were three of us, mm -hmm. uh, Moses, myself and another guy called Kyoko, who were left sitting in the car park mm -hmm. until about 3 a.m. waiting to be picked. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I guess that's where the magic happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I, I mean, we are so grateful to Aroko. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that you were stranded somewhere in the night. <laughs> Good things came from it. <laughs> came from it. Okay, so you and DJ Moes get married and mm. you plan to start, um, you know, a life, a family together. Mm -hmm. Was the plan to, to get started immediately trying to have kids or were you going to wait a little while? Mm. What was the plan? So the plan was always to wait a little yeah. while. Mm -hmm. um, so we thought maybe two years okay. would be a good time to have the first baby. Yeah. Um... And then I, I think a little before the two years, we began to feel like the time is right to start trying. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know whether that was God telling us now it's time, whether it was like pressure from, yes. I mean, not that we felt particularly pressured, but we just began to feel like this would be a nice addition to the family. Let's yes. do it. So, yes. yeah. Um, you, and now that you've mentioned pressure, I have to think because you obviously come from a, such a different cultural um, mm. background, coming to Kenya, coming to Africa, you know, we are in your business. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the culture as Africans and the things I like about it, the things I don't like about mm -hmm. it. How was that for you? Did you feel at all like there was any um, intrusion in, in you guys starting a family or was that, how different was it from I mean, I, not really, actually. And I think for a couple of reasons. I think I had already been in Kenya for a few years before I even met Moz. Yes. And again, I was always really grateful for that. As yeah. much as I love Moz, I didn't want to feel like I had moved countries for a man. Right, yeah. <laughs> and that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but <laughs> so I guess I, I was already familiar with culture and I guess had certain expectations around that. Yes. But I also feel to some extent church, and maybe it was the church I grew up in, but yeah. church culture is the same. Everybody's in your business. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so I feel like even, even in my home church, even my family, we, I'm completely driven by love, but my family are very tight and they're not scared of asking hard questions. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. um, I feel like it wasn't necessarily a new thing to have people asking questions that yeah. may or may not have been theirs to ask. Yes. <laughs> Um, so no, I didn't feel pressure in yeah. that way. Okay. Um, I think there was more just this, more just like societal pressure of like, okay, you get married, the next thing you have to do is have a baby yeah. and like, this is how things are supposed to go and yes. you're supposed to look perfect through the whole process. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> okay. So you guys are now warming up to the idea mm -hmm. of having kids mm -hmm. maybe a little sooner than the two years mm -hmm. that you thought. So what happens? So we got pregnant. Yeah. Um, I actually don't remember how long we tried for initially, but it yeah. wasn't a particularly long way. Yeah. We didn't have to, I don't know, pull any stunts to, yeah. <laughs> like, it, it just happened. Yes. Um, so we did get pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember now what date that was. Yeah. I think 2009. Okay. Um, 
And yeah, all seemed to be going well. Mm -hmm. We knew we wanted to wait till about the three month mark to yes. tell anybody. So yeah. we told close family, but okay. we didn't want to kind of have it in the public yeah. domain until three months. Yeah. And that I think is partly cultural for me just to, that's where you know you're at highest risk. So yes. you kind of keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. um, and all was going well until I was about 10, 11 weeks. Yeah. Um, so not incredibly far along, but coming to the end of the first trimester yeah. and actually coming out of the period, which is typically the Danger, highest, yes. yeah, mm. the highest risk. Mm. Um, and I was actually walking one day from the office to Junction, wasn't a long walk, yeah. um, and suddenly felt something. Yeah. Um, and knew I had started bleeding and knew something was not right. Yeah. Um, so I just jumped in a taxi and went straight to the hospital. Mm. Um, and yeah, the next, the next few hours, I remember actually very vividly, yeah. um, because yeah, I guess it was traumatic in yeah. many ways, yeah. um, being kind of rushed into the, the kind of treatment area at the yeah. hospital. Mm. Um, I was in incredible pain, um, mm. and just, yeah, the doctor saying basically, yeah. the, I mean, that after a bunch of exams, a few mm. tests and things, basically yeah. you've miscarried. Yeah. Um, but also you have to go for surgery, the mm. DNC uh, yes. procedure to clean out the uterus mm -hmm. and because it was fairly advanced. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it was a blur. I remember everything from calling my parents, which was very, calling my mom. That was emotional. That was hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause they were also super excited. Of and <laughs> yeah. I think I was, um, very close to my mom. Sadly, she's no longer with us, but, mm. um, yeah, it was just hard to be yeah. so far from her. She's obviously in the UK. I'm yes. here. I'm just going yeah. through this experience. Were you by yourself at the hospital at this time? Moz found me there. Yeah. Um, I can't remember at what point in the process. Yeah. I do remember he came pretty quickly. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> from wherever he was, thankfully, yes. it wasn't too complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but I was on my uh, on my own getting to the hospital and whatever, which yes. was fine. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I just... Yeah, headed into surgery, being kind of terrified of everything that's going on, mm. wondering what does this mean? Why has this happened? Yes, yes. <laughs> All of that. Mm. Um, and yeah. Did, did, did you, did they tell you anything or did you ask any of the doctors what had happened? Mm. Was there, or was this all going through your head? Yeah. I definitely asked questions. You did, okay. Ask Moz, I, I always have many questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so and especially for doctors and medical yes. professionals in yes. general. So yeah, I wanted to understand. I mean, yeah. why would this happen? What yeah. causes it? Yeah. It can't just happen for nothing. Yeah. And I guess I hadn't understood at that point how common miscarriage was. Yes. Again, because it's taboo, because it's not yeah. talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so did I do something wrong? Yeah. Was I too stressed? Did mm -hmm. I walk too fast? Yes. I mean, all of those things mm -hmm. that go through your mind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, why, why would this happen? And I remember at the time basically being told yeah. They couldn't tell me any reason for why mm -hmm. it would have happened or yeah. how I could have prevented it. Yes. Um, and basically that also they wouldn't investigate it. Like it's right. not something they investigate until yeah. it happens repeatedly. Yeah. Um, I remember doing a lot of Googling once yeah. I got home, yeah. <laughs> reading everything, which is sometimes good and sometimes not. <laughs> um, so yeah, but still left with many questions yeah. of just kind of why and how and yeah. what does that mean for the future? Yeah, and I think mm. that's the hardest thing is just not having mm. an answer. You know, mm. you can't say this is why it happened. You just mm. don't know. The doctor doesn't know and nobody wants to investigate. Yeah. Um, but also just the, I, I'm curious to know how you handled those feelings of everything that you're battling. Is it, is it did I do something? Mm. Did I, um, because I, I feel like a lot of women get stuck in that place, mm. the, the guilt and mm. self blame. How did you navigate those feelings? Yeah. It was hard. I mean, I think I tend to be quite rational and yeah. reasonable, but I mm -hmm. think there are still, especially when it's something so traumatic, it still eats at you. Yeah. And then because we hadn't told many people that we were expecting, yes. I didn't feel like there was a whole bunch of people I could have that conversation with. Yeah. So we did reach out to a couple of close friends. I remember, I remember Moz actually not really knowing how to process or who to process with, yeah. because as much as women don't talk about it, men talk about it even mm. less. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I'll never forget actually, um, 
one of the people we reached out to, she was a pastor actually at yeah. our church at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was the one who basically said, oh yeah, this is very common. Yeah. And then shared her own story of how it had happened to her. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was just, and that's the bit I couldn't quite get my head around. You mean yeah. everybody? Not everybody. Yeah. Lots of people go through this, yes. but it's still like this hush-hush yeah. conversation. Yeah. And it's still not something we're taught to not expect, but mm -hmm. kind of be prepared for as part of the process. Yes. Um, and not something that really the medical profession seems to spend a lot of time looking at or investigating or figuring out or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I feel like it's, it's almost like a, I look at it like it's like you get inducted into this sisterhood that you didn't know about existed, before yeah. <laughs> existed, where there's so many mm. women, but you didn't, and they were all around you. Yeah. But you didn't know <laughs> until you had a miscarriage. Mm. And, and you know, it's part of the reason why I want us to have these conversations that, you know, a woman watching can be like, okay, I'm not alone, mm. number one, because it's so isolating. You feel like, oh my gosh, what is this? What what have I done? Mm. Um, <clears throat> so what was the the healing process like for you physically mm -hmm. and also emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, because uh, the fact that people did not know you were pregnant mm -hmm. probably means the community wasn't very big around you. Uh, so everybody expects you to, life really is going on as mm -hmm. usual. Yeah. How do you cope with that feeling? There's an imbalance in your life, mm -hmm. but I have to continue on mm -hmm. with everything else. So. We definitely had some close friends around us and that was hugely meaningful and special. Mm -hmm. um, and we found along the way friends who were struggling in similar ways, yeah. one thing or another. Yeah. Um, so, so that helped. I think um, it's also hard because you're in an age and a space where lots of people are getting pregnant and lots of people yes. are having babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you're here trying to process yes. and, and you know it's completely unrational, but yes. it's like, why is she pregnant and I'm not? Yes. <laughs> and it's not because I have anything against <laughs> the person. It's just, yeah. yeah. And so you're trying to fight those kind of feelings that you know are not rational. Yes. But also deal with your own process of healing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I remember <laughs> even physically, it was, yeah. it was quite the journey. And I think because we had gone a little bit further along. Yeah. And so I remember going to, to church the next Sunday, actually. Mm -hmm. And I was still kind of swollen just yes. from the surgery and whatever. And I remember someone saying, oh, congratulations. <laughs> and I remember just not having words. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the physical, the emotional are all yeah. wrapped up, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was a journey. Yeah. We, I think the hardest milestone to get past was the what would have been the birth date or mm. the due date of that baby. Yes, yes. Um, I feel like that was a mental, emotional, kind of physically miles, milestone to get past. Yeah. Um, and there was definitely a sense of, I don't know if release is the right word, when mm. we passed that date. Yes. Um, and we actually then conceived again yes. within a couple of months of that date. So uh -huh. I almost feel like it was even just, I mean, the emotional and the physical is so yeah. intertwined. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so you, 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 you know, you've gone through that and then you're a few months into it, mm -hmm. you conceive again. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the state of your heart, your mind? Mm -hmm. Were you excited or were you like, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I think excited because we had essentially started trying again yeah. immediately. Yeah. Um, and it felt like it wasn't happening. Yeah. Um, so it did take about a year from kind of the miscarriage to the next conception. Yeah. And it just felt like it wasn't happening. Yeah. Um, so, so that was hard. So then there's a sense of relief that, oh, I did get pregnant again. Yeah. So I'm something okay. works somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> something works. Um, but then definitely a level of anxiety. Oh, will we carry this baby to term? Will yes. the same thing happen? Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of cautiously taking one day, one week at a time, yes. trying not to get too excited. Yes. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, the, when just talking to different women, one of the things is that keeps coming up is just is fear when they try again, is the fear of, and, and fear can really paralyze mm -hmm. somebody. Um, how, how do you feel, what are things that you you feel you consciously did mm. to override that fear mm. in order to carry your pregnancy? Yeah. So there are definitely decisions I made about um, things like I restricted physical exercise, so I didn't ah. do much. Mm. I tried to 
drive rather than walk places, whether okay. that was like a, a mental thing because in the last I had walked and then yes. <laughs> like, and yes. I used to walk all the time. So yes. it wasn't like it was a one off that I walked. But <laughs> again, just like the, the way your brain works. I yeah. <laughs> um, I did stop traveling. So I used yeah. to do quite a lot of traveling mm -hmm. outside of Nairobi. So I stopped traveling. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just tried to be more careful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of it kind of research scientifically driven, some of it just my own. Yes. Yeah. Well, whatever you needed to do to make yourself yeah. feel that mm -hmm. you're doing your best. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so this baby number two, was that a, a good pregnancy? It was. Yeah. It was. Actually went really smoothly. Good. Um, we welcomed a bouncing baby girl oh. at 38 weeks. Yes. So. Wow. Yes. Yes, Zara. <laughs> yeah. Um, who's now a, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Preteen. Preteen, I cannot believe it. <laughs> a preteen who thinks she's 16, but yeah. <laughs> she's clueless, kind no, of. But, <laughs> knocking but, on the door. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's been an I mean, amazing gift in yeah. so many ways. Yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, it was definitely significant to know that we have carried this baby to term. Yeah. Um, her delivery actually went very well. Yeah. Um, born through a normal delivery, like no complications. Wow. So yeah, I, yeah, that was a huge blessing. Yes. And we felt hugely blessed to then hold our baby in yes. our arms. Yes, so, your, your yeah. first baby yeah. baby in your arms. Yeah. Um, so baby Zara comes, she is very beautiful guys, very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like when I think of, because I, I, I've known Zara from when she was very little mm -hmm. and now seeing that she's a preteen, I'm like, oh my goodness, are we getting old? <laughs> yep. Is that <laughs> that's what's happening, right? <laughs> Sour. <laughs> There's no avoiding it. <laughs> no avoiding. We accept it mm. gracefully. Um, <clears throat> okay, Deb. So Zara has come. Uh, did you have? Uh, did you start thinking of making the family bigger, mm. or what was the plan? I mean, not immediately. Yeah. We had kind of conversations back and forth. I always wanted three kids. Yeah. Um, Moz some days wanted two, some days wanted three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, between two and three. <laughs> yeah. Um, but not immediately. Okay. But then I also knew I didn't want a huge space. Yes. So after about a year, we decided to start trying again. Okay. Um, and again, got pregnant um, relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, with... Yeah, pregnancy number three. Yeah. Um, and yeah, again, it ended in miscarriage. Um, this time about six weeks in, so yeah. we hadn't gone quite as far. Yes. Um, and it was a very different experience in lots of ways. But how, yeah. how different was it? I mean, I think it was different, first of all, because the first experience had prepared us just with certain expectations. So we, we knew not every pregnancy and goes to term. Yeah. We knew that I had had previous complications and therefore more complications yeah. could be likely. Yeah. Um, so not that we were expecting it as such, but we were, we were ready for things to go either, either way. way. Mm. But I guess we had also developed just some kind of like emotional, spiritual, physical toolkits for having to yeah. <laughs> process yes. and heal. And we knew who to reach out to. We knew to some extent, just what we needed to pray through and work through. Yeah. Um, and then because it wasn't as late on in the pregnancy, I didn't mm -hmm. need surgery this time. So yes. the physical healing was much easier yes. in that sense. Yes. Um, it was earlier. We hadn't told as many people. Yeah. So, so yeah, it was just quite a different experience. Still yeah. hard, but yeah. I think we... We weren't as shocked by it. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, I know that, it, you know, obviously men process loss and grief so differently mm -hmm. from women. And I will bring the men over here to, to tell mm -hmm. us themselves. But how did you feel that you process, processed the, the losses as a couple? Did you feel like um, your husband understood what you were going through? Did you feel misunderstood? What did you feel mm. in that time? Because, and I ask this question because there's a lot of relationships that fall mm. apart because of yeah. loss. Mm. How did you guys navigate mm. the losses? Yeah, it's a tricky one. I think, I mean, as a woman, it happens to your body. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a very different physical experience yeah. than the man. I think Moz definitely... He definitely tried to understand. He definitely tried to come alongside me. Mm. I remember, as I say, that him just feeling like, for men, it was a very different process. He didn't know how to process it as a man. Yeah. It hadn't happened to his body. Yeah. He didn't 
know this small being that yes. <laughs> yes. didn't quite come to be. Yeah. I mean, so there were definitely, he wasn't, he wasn't insensitive. There were definitely yeah. times he would have said things that I would have been like, ouch, that hurts. Yes. But not because he was trying to yeah. be, just because he doesn't we were know processing what... yeah, yeah. <laughs> differently. Yeah. Um, I think we were very fortunate to have great role models around us, couples who yes. had had to deal with grief and different things in various ways mm. and different kinds of grief. Yes. But I think the models that we had around us were that you could find your way through complexity, you could find your way through difficult situations right. that yes, life is hard, but yeah. actually yeah. your relationship can persist through it. Right. Um, and so it's not that every day was amazing, but just that we knew that there's yeah. no otherwise. Yes. <laughs> you just we figure it out together. and yeah. you grow stronger through the process. Yeah. So, yeah. Did, did it, um, you dealing with um, the second loss, did that affect you how you were parenting because you also had a little baby mm -hmm. Zara was still one yeah, yeah. she's mm -hmm. still a baby how did that affect how you were parenting her at the time how do you mm -hmm. handle your own grief and being fully there for yeah. your baby I mean that's interesting and I think as a parent comes up with so many things I mean from losing a parent yeah. to you're still trying to parent your kids yes. to yeah other difficult situations yes. so I think we try to strike a balance in general with our kids of being real, but not completely terrifying them. <laughs> so, I mean, she was she was less than one actually when the miscarriage happened. Yes. So obviously very little awareness yes. of, of that. I, mm. So I think we our intention was just to continue to be present for her, yes. but to give each other space yeah. as we could. So yeah. um, Moz would say, you go take the day, do what you need to do, have mm -hmm. some space and I'll... Yeah. And I mean, through all of this, I mean, life is still going on. You're still yeah. working, you're still... Church has many yeah. responsibilities, mm -hmm. all of those things. Yeah. So you're still kind of juggling, yes. but I think an intention to just protect each other and yeah. support each other was yeah. important. Okay. Yeah. Did, um, were you, and you were working at the time. Yes. Did you need to take time off or no? No, at that time I didn't take time okay. off. I had with the first one, but not with this one. Yeah, because... Yeah. Maybe was, a day or two, but yes. not like an extended. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you navigate, you go through this second um, loss, miscarriage, mm -hmm. And then, is that when you had Alba? Was Alba yes. the next Alba was baby? the next baby, next yes. Baby Alba. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was another, was that an easy pregnancy? It was relatively easy, relatively yeah. It went easy. fairly smoothly. Yeah. I guess this time now we knew kind of what to expect with a pregnancy that goes to term. We knew yes. what to expect with birth and labor yes. and all of that. So yeah. it went smoothly. She came at 39 weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and did you feel like you were probably now more at ease? You're not as fearful as at the time. Yeah. So are you back to doing your walks? And... But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think like, so. I'm not walking. Um, I, no, I was definitely more relaxed, but still yeah. cautious. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm by nature, in some ways, a cautious person anyway. Yeah. Like I like to process mm -hmm. risk if I'm taking it. I don't mm -hmm. just like jump in. Yes. So I guess that, yeah. And and then there was a sense of, I did all these things and the pregnancy went to term. So maybe I should apply some of the same caution and uh -huh. the pregnancy will go to term. Yes. Um, so, so yeah. 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 But a, a bit more relaxed for sure. A bit yeah. more relaxed, mm -hmm. I guess. There's, a, there's just an assurance when, yeah. you know, when you're able to, to have yeah. a, a healthy exactly. baby. Exactly. We right? can do this thing. Yes, we can do yeah. this. <laughs> okay. So now... You and Moe's, so Moe's wanted maybe two, you wanted <laughs> three. Um, so who won? Did you decide to go? <laughs> did you decide to go for one more? Or what did you <laughs> we did go for one more. Yeah. It was a bit of a journey getting there. Yes. Um, mainly because we had other life stuff happen in between. Yes. Um, my mom suddenly passed away. Yeah. Um, just other stuff. And, yeah. and we, or at least I was very aware that I didn't want to have a third baby as an emotional reaction to anything else. So right. I felt like I needed to process mm. some other life stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then we could make the decision as yes. to whether or not we have baby number three. Yeah. Um, and it was actually after we had had Alba that Mo said, no, two is good, we're okay. fine. And maybe that's because we had two under two and he was like, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you want to add another one to this? <laughs> and you guys have never really had like live in hell. No, we haven't. Yeah, so <laughs> so, like... Yeah. And that was the time, by the way, you guys used to work every single weekend. So every Saturday morning was like, me, I'm out. Bye. In Karatina, enjoy. Yeah, I mean, exactly. If you need anything. 
<laughs> I'm like chairs. <laughs> so <laughs> would you community came into play? <laughs> so when we come back on Sunday evening, were you like here, your yeah. children? <laughs> well, and the worst thing was because I worked full time throughout. I mean, yeah. other than maternity leave, mm. so you guys would go the whole weekend, come yes. back Sunday night, yes. then Monday morning I'd be at the office. <laughs> I'm like, hold on a minute. <laughs> this is not yeah. something not adding yeah, exactly. up here. <laughs> <laughs> and then for us, Monday was like our rest day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. so Moses is just chilling Monday. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you're like, you're just, are you chilling? Are you really just yeah, chilling? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so uh-huh. yes, that was a, an experience. But yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we finally got to the point where we decided, yes, let's have baby number three. Yes. Um, so we again got pregnant relatively easy and again had a miscarriage. Oh. Um, this time a little bit earlier. I don't yeah. know what the science is this time it was just about five weeks so yes. very early yeah I mean we'd really only within a week or two find out we were pregnant and then lost the pregnancy yeah and I guess by this point we'd kind of thought maybe this is how it goes <laughs> you have a miscarriage you carry a baby to term you have mm. a miscarriage I, I don't know whether that again there's any science to that or not yeah. but yeah that was kind of where our minds fixed so we weren't incredibly surprised mm. because it happened so early we kind of just I mean there was definitely a moment of yeah. sadness but it was also like okay we know what we have to do yes. <laughs> um, and so we again we got pregnant um fairly quickly yeah. after that and yeah. then Baraka came along oh, <laughs> a little while later baby number uh, three yes <laughs> yeah. I, I mean even as I'm saying baby number three I have to ask this question because I've mm. wondered so many times mm. in my in my head when people ask you how many children do you mm. have mm. do you struggle with that question ever mm. or do you have are there spaces where you have explained? Mm. Um, because it's not such, it's not a straightforward answer it's as not, we imagine yeah. it is. Yeah. How do you answer that question? So um, if somebody asks me how many children I have, yeah. my answer is always three. Yes. If somebody asks me how many times I've been pregnant, uh-huh. the answer is six with a bit of explanation. Yes. Um, but I, I think, at least for me, and everybody's experience is different. Yeah. There was a difference between the fact that I miscarried relatively early on. Yeah. I think when you carry a child to term mm-hmm. and lose a child at term, that's mm-hmm. a very different experience. Yeah. But also I think, and even just from sharing and listening with friends, mm-hmm. that's that that's a child. Not yeah. that the pregnancy is not a child, yeah, but I, hear you. I think it's important to count yeah. that as yeah. uh, that's one of my children yeah. Um, yeah so everybody's different as I say and everybody's yes. experience is different but absolutely yeah. absolutely um it's been you know many years uh, well a couple of years since that happened mm. do you feel now when you look back do you feel that you fully processed the losses do you do you ever feel triggered in any way mm. um do you feel like you healed um, where are you at with that? Yeah. So I think I have healed as much as you can heal on this side of heaven. <laughs> I think yeah. there's a fullness of healing that will come mm. in a day that is not yet here. Mm. Um, but I, I would say that when I hear about other miscarriages, yeah. when I hear about baby loss, it definitely touches me somewhere. Yeah. And that there's a I don't know, even know how to explain it. It's just a feeling you get in your Mm -hmm. gut that Mm -hmm. (laughs) you can identify with that person and you you feel your pain as you feel their pain in a way. Yeah. Um, And and so, but I I wouldn't frame that as not having healed. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think that's just life and that's what Mm -hmm. makes us human. (laughs) Absolutely, yeah. Um, So, so yeah, I, I definitely, as I say, feel... A sensitivity around other women who've experienced mm. similar loss, yes. um, and so have tried to have tried to speak openly where there has been that chance yes. about loss, yes. about um, yeah, yeah, what it feels like, why it's important to talk about it, yes. that kind of thing. And I appreciate that you're doing that because, mm. you know, having gone through loss, I think I, I, when I think about myself, is in that moment when you experience loss, you want to hear, you want to, you. I went looking everywhere. I was like mm-hmm. Googling, going on YouTube. Yeah. Who else has a story like this? Mm-hmm. I just needed to hear from people who had walked that journey to feel less alone. Yeah. It sort of made me feel, didn't make me feel better. It just made me feel less That's alone. alone. Mm-hmm. And like somebody understood mm-hmm. it, you know. Um, and I'm really grateful that you're able to do that, Debs, mm-hmm. to speak about it um, so that somebody listening to it can be like, okay, we, you know, 
I'll, I'll be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I will be mm-hmm. okay. And the reality of it is, you know, I'm so grateful that I, you know, I have babies that I can hold. You have babies that you can hold. The truth is there are people who have had mm-hmm. losses and have not been able to have children and maybe mm-hmm. may not be able to have children mm-hmm. biologically. And I, I want to give you a, a, a minute to encourage somebody, Debs, mm-hmm. who just feels like the loss has been like, a, has signified like an end of their mm-hmm. dreams or um, it's like something has crippled who they mm-hmm. are. Um, what would you say to that person right now? I think two things. I think the loss does not define you. Wow. I think, yeah. especially as women, mm. so much of our ability to get pregnant, carry children to term, keep healthy children, so yeah. much of who we are is defined and even valued yes. on that basis. Mm-hmm. And so your loss does not define you. Your ability to either birth children biologically or not does yeah. not define you. Mm-hmm. And and it's because, yes, God gave us this amazing physical ability to grow a human potentially, and, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. God also created us for so much more. Yes. And there's so many other things that God created you yeah. for mm-hmm. that may or may not include yeah. biologically carrying and birthing your own children. Yes. Um, and so I think lean into all of those pieces of who you are and God yeah. created you to be. And yeah. everybody's path is different. Yeah. Um, for some people that will mean adopting children, yes. giving children who desperately need mm-hmm. love and a home, that place and that love that they need. Yeah. Um, for others that will mean serving and loving and giving in other ways. Mm-hmm. And I think it, I can't determine anybody's path. I can't yes. dictate anybody's path, yes. but whether or not you're able to have children, God created you for a purpose yeah. and lean into him and figure out what that purpose is. And that's where you will be fulfilled. Yeah. Um, and having a baby might not have been in fact, the thing that would fulfill you and, yeah. and that purpose. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love what you're saying because I, I usually say that motherhood is a great calling, but it's not the only calling. Exactly. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Uh, it's such a great thing. It's such mm. a beautiful gift, but there is rightfully like what you're saying, that there's so much more to who we mm. are mm-hmm. um, as human beings, as mm. women, that, and, and, and I, I pray that us having these conversations mm. will normalize the fact that a woman is still complete, whether or not yes, she has absolutely. children. And whether or not she's married. And whether or not <laughs> she's married, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think there's a responsibility yeah. in the church, in society in general, yeah. not to make those assumptions on behalf of women, yes. but to accept if I decide or not to have children, if I'm able or not to have children, yes. get married, whatever it is, that yes. I am still a full person. Absolutely. I can still achieve all that God has called me to yes. achieve. And yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you feel in your journey, in your motherhood journey, mm-hmm. what do you feel has been your greatest source of support? Hmm. I think, Family and friends yeah. and my community. community. And, and that's shifted and changed a bit over time. I think there are some families we've worked the whole journey with, mm-hmm. right from day yeah. zero. Yes. Um, families whose husbands also worked on weekends. And yes. so we, <laughs> we hung out with our babies and toddlers wondering what on earth. <laughs> um, but yeah, from blood relatives to close friends, it's it, that's, that's how we've survived. That's yes. how we've thrived, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Leaning into each other in hard seasons, yeah. leaning into each other when life is messy and hard. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, parenthood doesn't happen in isolation. So yes. Yes. the ups and, down, ups and downs of marriage mm-hmm. are all mixed in, yeah. the ups and downs of employment and work and yeah. are all mixed in. Yes. So I think just having a community to yeah. work with. Yeah. For us, obviously, our faith has been a big piece, just yeah. understanding. Um, what God has called us to, yeah. not always understanding what that looks like, yeah. but just understanding that God is faithful and that he loves us and is yes. somehow guiding us yes. through this messy Ab- <laughs> thing yeah. called life. <laughs> we figure it out yeah. as, as we go. Mm. Um, I'll just touch on this because you, uh, Mose has made it very public that he got a vasectomy. Yes. I was looking for the right word. <laughs> he got a vasectomy, yeah. which, you know, I think is so 
um, maybe uh, maybe rare is not the word, but not too many men talk about it, those who have made that decision. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's a lot of women who are like, oh, Deb's so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> because the burden is heavily yeah. put on the woman mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you know, have children, prevent having children. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a lot. You've yeah. carried those children, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes, it is. Um, I mean, I, 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 what, how... How did you guys arrive at that decision that it's, it was going to be Mo's <laughs> to, to take one for the team? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess it was a, a series of things. I think, um, so my chosen form of birth control was the pill. Yes. Um, I had been on the pill actually from my late teens because I had irregular periods. Yes. Um, lots of people don't know, but the pill is used to treat lots of other things other oh, yeah. than just to prevent pregnancy. Yes, yes. Um, so I had been on the pill by the time we had Baraka. I'm trying to think. Um, maybe close to like 15, 16, 17 years. A long so, time. and there's lots of evidence that says taking the pill over prolonged periods is actually really risky. It increases your risk of all sorts of other complications uh -huh. to do with, and I won't remember them, but it's like blood pressure and heart issues yes. and like pretty serious stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I remember feeling like if we finished having children, yeah. if we're not intending to have any more, then yes. I don't need to yes. be on the pill anymore as a chosen form of birth control. There are other things we can do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember having the conversation with Moz and him being very open in principle to having a vasectomy. Wow. Um, my understanding was... Um, not as a doctor, yeah. <laughs> as a Googler. <laughs> <laughs> Professional Googler. Yes. <laughs> that the process for women is much more complicated, yeah. whether it was tying your tubes, whether mm -hmm. it was a full hysterectomy, whatever, yeah. it comes with yeah. all sorts of other complications. Yeah. Whereas vasectomy is a fairly simple procedure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have typically a lot of other complications. Yes. It doesn't give you hormonal imbalance for the rest of your life. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and it can, yeah. I think, be undone. Oh, okay. If it's reversible. Really needs to be. Yeah. yeah. I, I believe it is. Yeah. I actually know somebody who had it reversed. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 So it just seemed like the obvious choice. And yeah. so in principle, he agreed. Mm -hmm. Of course, getting to the action yeah. was yes. <laughs> harder. <laughs> and so I remember him continuously asking him, and I don't know if he ever tells this as part of his story. <laughs> <laughs> have you booked? Have you done? Have yes. you found a doctor? Have you? And yeah. yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then um, one of his friends would come and say, oh, I, I had it done. And I went here and I did this. And, yeah. and I'm oh, OK. And that would give him a little bit of psych, but it would still never seem to go. <laughs> So I remember eventually, and he might kill me for saying this, but I remember <laughs> eventually telling him yes. um, at some point that uh, next month I'm going to stop taking the pill. <laughs> and after that, I will not engage in any behavior that might result in pregnancy. <laughs> so you figure it out. Say no more. <laughs> so he very quickly acted, <laughs> figured it yes, out. Yes, this is what you should have said from the beginning. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah. that's when the vasectomy actually happened. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so funny. And I, 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 I honestly cannot wait to just have this conversation with guys <laughs> and hear where their headspace is at with you know with these things. But um, I love that it's taking responsibility. Both of you taking mm -hmm. responsibility mm -hmm. that you know being parents is not on one person. Absolutely. And even the conversation surrounding um, infertility and the things that happen mm -hmm. are not. It, we place the burden on the woman but um it's usually a 50 50 mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. there, there are many cases where a couple is unable to have children it's actually the man Absolutely. who has mm -hmm. an issue mm -hmm. so just I, I love watching your journey and seeing that you've um whether you had to at some point be like <laughs> <laughs> most, but like it's both of you have played a role mm -hmm. in, in in that and that's so beautiful to watch Debs I'm so grateful thank you for saying yes to me <laughs> for talking to us um I don't know. Can people slide into your DM if they have questions? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> you, you, okay, you can slide into her. We'll put her handle. You can you can talk to Debs and and if you have any questions or that kind of thing. Thank you. Give my love to the babies. I will. All Thank right. you so much. <laughs> I love their, especially, you know, Zara used to, I was telling Moe's on his podcast the other day, I remember when Zara used to, she couldn't say carrot, she said carrot, and I would love, I loved him, like, how is this baby saying carrot? <laughs> and then I had a baby later and he couldn't say carrot. <laughs> it came back to haunt you. I remember texting Moe's and I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry for the years I laughed at Zara. <laughs> no, she felt the love. Don't worry. <laughs> I love her. I love them. All right. So that has been Debs, Deborah Kimathi, talking to me here on Being Kambua. Thank you for joining us today. Let's keep the conversations going. Share your story. Let me know what it is uh, from Debs' story that just stood out for you, what your take home today is, what you feel. This is what I needed to hear today. I'm going to move forward. I'd love to know what that is. Tell your friends, tell your loved ones that being Kambu is a place where we have these conversations where we create a safe space for all of us, especially for women, uh, because we keep being told it's a responsibility on the women. Uh, we keep being told, be quiet, don't talk too much about it, don't talk too loudly about it. Well, we are here to talk loudly about it because um, things tend to uh, thrive in silence and we want those things to come out in the air so we can heal and we can be better people. Have a great week and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.